What's up, everybody? And today we're checking out a video uh, that Task and Purpose put out about the attempted assassination on uh, the former President Donald Trump. You guys know that I don't usually get political on this channel. In fact, I never get political on this channel, and I have no intention to get really political on, on this video either, to be honest with you. Um, I just feel like... I want to put into perspective. I know I always put Royal Marine in the in the descript in the the title because I was in the British Royal Marines Commandos, right? Um, and most people know this. Some people don't. I am actually a U.S. citizen as well. Um, I've lived in America from 2015 through until the end of last year, getting my citizenship and all that lot. I was there during the chaos of the 2016 election, the 2020 election, and obviously I've just left before the chaos of this election. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not going to get political, but what I am going to talk about is the Secret Service and how, how, what happened here? How was someone able to get on the roof of a building and take a shot off not only a former president, which is mental in itself, but someone running for president, right? Like that in itself, whether you agree with Trump or not, whether you're a Trump or Biden supporter, whatever old age pensioner you support... <laughs> um i think this is a very bizarre situation and it makes me wonder about the qualifications of the secret service right like it, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of questions going up in the air now about their capability we've seen images we've seen pictures i saw a video of the sniper on top of the building um and it looked like he was looking in the direction of the shooter for for a longer period of time before he got shot off so I have a lot of questions about this, naturally, right? Um, and Task and Purpose have put a video out, um, ex like kind of going over some of the stuff. And I think this is probably the best video for me to talk about it, react to it, and kind of give my opinion as someone who was in a, you know, a, a very highly skilled military branch, the Royal Marines Commandos, and just kind of give my opinion on what's going on here and and what could have happened um and all that lot so we're not going to get into the politics of it right we're not going to talk about the person who's nearly been assassinated or maybe we will at some point but um it's mostly going to be about the secret service and what what has happened because if anything this has been an absolute disaster we're talking centimeters away from a former president being killed like centimeters like not even that like one centimeter to the right could have took him out you know um even just a little turn of his head so they shot they shot his head right and it it skimmed the top of his hair his ear here there's some rumors that it hit one of the glass display things and it, it, it moved or whatever it hit the top of his ear here all he had to do was just be like you know Taught, like moving his head this way and all of a sudden it takes out the back of his head like that's how close that is people don't realize how close this was so let's break this down let's watch this video um we'll get into it M maybe we talk a bit of politics near the end of it i don't know i never talk politics on this video um but it just it feels like god do you know what's ironic as well this happened what saturday night Friday night, Steph and I watched that Civil War movie as well. And obviously, we've just left America, and we both love the country. We both love America, right? Uh, we left for many different reasons that I'm not going to get into on the channel right now. Um, it, it just feels like tensions are getting more and more... Um, they're, getting, they're getting bigger. The tensions are getting bigger. They're getting more scary. It makes me just want to buy a ranch in the middle of absolute nowhere and be a prepper. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Let's see what Task and Purpose have to say. A shooter fired multiple shots at former President Donald Trump in an assassination attempt at a rally in Pennsylvania. One of the bullets struck Trump in the ear, causing him to quickly take cover behind the podium. We can see within three seconds the first line of Secret Service defense jumped into the line of fire, creating a shield around him with their bodies. This is not a political video. The purpose of this is to examine the assassination attempt 
using open source intelligence methods and expert analysis from yeah. law enforcement officers. Lieutenant Tim McMillan, retired law enforcement officer who has extensive experience having worked five presidential details in the past. So this guy definitely knows what he's talking about then. He's got some uh, experience in there as well. Vice News as well, stuff like that. Said this on X. They basically formed a bulletproof barrier around him. They didn't let him stand up until after they knew the shooter was down. They would have gotten communications. Someone here? I hope not. I'm in the house alone. I heard some movement in the house. We got ghosts in the house. <laughs> I'm going to check the... The cameras. I have cameras around the house, guys. Make sure no one's... No one's uh, pissing about. Yeah, I don't see anyone. I have to get out my commando dagger. Through their radio devices in their earpieces, confirming this. At this moment, the agents are not just protecting Trump, but they're also checking his body Didn't know where to look at that image. <laughs> Didn't know where to look. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> and assessing his condition to see if he's ambulatory or not to see if he can move on his own because when someone's adrenaline is pumping shock can prevent them from knowing if they have multiple injuries it's actually not their job to return fire immediately and no. that's because meanwhile the secret service counter sniper team located here on this rooftop returned fire within moments Okay, so that there is the rooftop where this sniper was. 500 feet away. How, how was he able to get on that roof? How was he able to get there and somebody didn't take that? I even saw a video of, of someone basically being like, we, we were shouting, there's a guy on the roof with a gun. Like, people were saying this. Have I got hair on me here? I feel like I'm getting so distracted in this video right now. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't understand how he was able to get on that roof and get a shot off. It makes no sense. The Secret Service should have basically had visuals on all of the all of the the, the roofs around the area. We've got this power equipment area over here. We've got what looks like is that like a water tower. I know that Google Images doesn't like render stuff perfectly well. Is that a water tower? You know, we've got buildings over here. Like, if anyone was on top of them buildings, they should have been taken out instantly. Let's be honest. And eliminated the gunman here, 130 meters away, with a shot to the head. About 16 seconds after the shooting first started. 16 seconds. And it was only 100, 100, over, just over 100 meters away. Like, that, that's nothing. That's absolutely nothing. The final gunshot can be heard presumably from the counter sniper team. Tim McMillan put it this way, saying, quote, people have wondered, how could the counter snipers in the video not have seen the would-be assassin prior to him getting off a shot? This is because the area of responsibility for those counter snipers on the roof behind Trump was very likely in the extended tier. Essentially, they were scanning for threats a great distances well beyond the roughly 150 meters the threat appeared. That 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 gives a bit of context to it because they are snipers at the end of the day. But what I think is important is the fact that there was someone on the roof so close and yet no one pinged him. I understand that that sniper might be looking further away just in case. But why is there no one looking at the, the closer stuff as well? If there is, I, I just don't understand how like, they they've they've completely missed the ball on this haven't they they've completely missed the ball and i think what has to happen is they have to have a fundamental restructure on what's going on tensions are rising pol politically right now in america and so if anything it needs to be doubled down now more than ever there is a person 130 meters away on a roof the sniper's looking beyond that, looking for people further. Around. So why was he able to get here on the roof? Why is there not security around here? We know for a fact that everyone in the attendance crowd would have been searched, would have be made sure no weapons allowed, all that other stuff. They would have been searched. We're talking 100 meters away from the people who the, at the crowd here, right? I'm presuming this car park was used for people going to the rally, right? And so how was this person able to get through this car park with a, a rifle 
climb onto this building with a rifle, lay down with a rifle, take aim and get a shot off. And nobody is, has been alerted. Nobody. This is evidenced by the fact that the elevated counter sniper has to dramatically drop his line of sight yeah. to respond to the shooter. 27 seconds after the first shot was fired, we see the next line of defense reach their positions. Members of the Secret Service more heavily armed counter assault team seen here in full black uniform, sporting SR-16 suppressed rifles, establish a security perimeter on the stage. They're looking for potential threats that are close quarters. We yeah. can see them scanning the up close rows of the crowd from zero to 100 meters because they know the counter sniper teams are scanning for threats beyond 100 meters. Right. We can see the agents in multicam set up security facing the rear, which shows the tactical discipline of this team because not every single agent is facing the direction of the incoming fire. Yeah. There's a natural tendency in human beings to key in on and get tunnel vision on the direction where shots are coming from, but it takes discipline yes. to establish that 360 degree security. This is necessary because they don't know if there might still be another threat out there at this point. Yeah, that's real. That's a really important, um, a really important point to make because I've seen a lot of people online have conspiracy theories about multiple shooters and all that lot. And whether you believe the conspiracy theorists, it, it doesn't matter. The tactics are that if one shot's got off, there could be multiple shots. That's this is like basic playbook stuff. Basic place playbook stuff in the military. You form a line of defense. So let's talk about what my speciality was, which was beach landing in the Royal Marines Commandos. Right, you get off the 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 the, the ship, right, or whatever you're on, rigid radar, whatever floating vessel you are on, and you form. We're looking down here. You form like a, a, a like a semicircle perimeter to keep watch out in all directions. Now, let's say that someone gets into the fire on the right-hand side of that semicircle. Everyone doesn't turn around at that point and start shooting in direction that direction. Everyone is on alert and starts looking in their direction and being like, is there any more? This is basic. Any, anybody in the military knows this stuff. These guys are coming onto the stage and they are sweeping everything. They're looking at everyone in the crowd. They're looking at people just beyond the crowd, underneath the seating. They're looking everywhere. Now... At this point, I'm pretty sure he said um, the the snipe the the shooter was down. Is that what he said at this point? Because if the shooter is down, then it takes less discipline to be like, all right, where the fuck is another threat coming from? If the shooter's not down, this guy. Let me let me uh, let me get this footage up here. Single discipline of this team because not every single a we can see. Wait, them it's a bit it's a bit further back actually. Right here. This guy here, right? I don't know if there's another guy on the other side of the... Yeah, there is. Okay, so we've got one guy here. We've got one guy here. My presumption... Now, these are doing close protection more than anything. They're not just doing regular military drills. So my idea of the semicircle with the direction of fire, that's really important. But this is close protection. It's a little bit different, right? These two people here on the top, these people have gone onto the onto the, the stage, right? So they can get a better observation of what's going around. Not only that, and I think this is a very important tactic that they probably don't talk about. You put two gunmen on the stage in clear visibility of everyone, they're most likely to get shot first, right? No one likes to admit it, but it's true. And if someone shoots at them, all the other gunmen then have an idea, another shooter, this direction. Do you get what I'm saying? It's kind of like putting yourself in the limelight a little bit, making the shooter. So the the people who are protecting the president, the former president, are trying to get a, a general scan of the area while also making the shooter get tunnel vision. Does that make sense? And so these two, people are, two, two lads are on top here, and it looks like that there's lads on the bottom of the stage as well, forming kind of like a bit of a patrol and keeping observation around as well. They're the people who will be like, if someone takes another shot now, I'm going to know exactly where it is because they're probably going to start shooting at my lads. Do you know what I mean? Members of the Secret Service more heavily armed counter assault team seen here in full black uniform, sporting SR-16. Is that the SR-16 that the Royal Marines are going to be getting? 
they responded to a shooting incident involving a former or current president. I think we missed a little bit there. Discipline to yeah. establish that 360 degree security. This is necessary because they don't know if there might still be another threat out there at this point. Secrets. It looks like a lot of the basic stuff that they've done is correct. I just, I, my question is, how did they allow this guy to get on the roof? Like, how did they allow that? Everything else they've done is 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 on point, right? The sniper that's looking in the dist further away got the shot off and killed the guy. Apparently, got him right in the face, right? Great shot, cool. These guys are doing all the drills perfectly here. The 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 bodyguards are on top of the former president. They're on top of him, right? Making sure if any rounds get shot, it hits them first. I know it's a shit job, but that's their job, right? These lads are, are, are scouting for other shoots. Everything else is perfect here, right? How did this guy get on the roof? How did he get there? They shouldn't even be in this position. Service CAT teams were originally established in 1979, and this is the first time in history that I believe they responded to a shooting incident involving a former or current president. Trump then told his security service detail to wait. He raised his fist and pumped it at the crowd. He shouted fight as the crowd chanted USA back. I know I don't care what political side you're on that picture is unreal in it oh my god that picture <laughs> that's going to be just one of them images that goes down in history isn't it when asked about this moment mcmillan said quote as for letting him pose for the photo op there's always a degree of conflict between the personal protection detail and the political asset yeah One's entire mission is to protect their asset the others is to be political i do feel like it's weird that they allowed him to stand up there and just stood there. And it's almost as if they were waiting for someone to give the command to start moving. A bit weird that because I've got a lot of, I, a lot of Royal Marines go into close protection. In fact, I was very close to getting a close protection job when I left the Royal Marines uh, to the point I was, I was having interviews and all sorts and um, well, online interviews, it wasn't in-person interviews. So it, it wasn't getting that far, I guess. But like um, the fact that they stood him up, and let him stand there for it was like a good twenty seconds before they start moving. I just feel like that's a weird that's a weird one. That it is a bit of a weird one. It's as if they it's as if it, it was such a shock they weren't really too sure what to do. I also saw firsthand when then Vice President Biden deviated from the pre-planned path to shake people's hands during a 2013 visit to Savannah. The agents on the ground then escorted Trump to a predetermined evacuation point, roughly 50 meters to the rear of the stage in a reinforced armored truck. At this point, roughly two minutes after the first shots rang out, he's evacuated and his motorcade then sped to a hospital where he received treatment. Uh. Swarms of additional units then make their way to the stage. Yeah. As a result of the assassination attempt, one attendee was killed and two others were injured who are still in critical condition That's sad. in the rounds that missed the president. When I watched the video of what happened last night, it filled me with a visceral reaction of disgust and anger. Yeah. It made me concerned for my country. I'm praying. He's got, he's got a good point there. We can talk about politics in general, right? We can talk about who you follow or whatever. This is, a, this is the United States of America. This is not Russia. We don't, we don't assassinate people running for president. We don't do it, right? We know, and I don't care, you can get your conspiracy hat on and put out all, point fingers in all different directions. But the truth is, a, a former president was nearly, was nearly killed this weekend. He was shot, and it, we're talking an inch away from, he, from his life being gone. And it wasn't, luckily. And I feel like, it's it's getting so desperate in America right now and it needs to calm down. Everybody needs to calm down. It's turning into... It started in 2016 as like sports teams, didn't it? Right versus left, red versus blue. It was like a sports team thing and people were getting aggressive, but people weren't trying to assassinate people and now they are. And it makes me, it makes me so worried for this election because no matter who wins this next election... Half of the country are going to be mad. And it just seems like nothing will solve that. We just need people to chill the fuck out. Big time. At the end of the day, it's one country. We're, we're one country, right? We're all Americans. 
and dividing America is only going to let Russia and China take advantage. If there was ever a civil war like that movie, one thing they didn't depict, right? It was just always in a fight in civil war in America. Do you don't think any of the other countries would take advantage of that? Because they certainly would. My wife was saying, oh my God, it's horrible. I was like, yeah, but if this was all kicking off, you're telling me that Russia wouldn't start trickling into Alaska. You wouldn't tell me that China would be in there trying to make things worse. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's the stuff they didn't show in the Civil War movie. That somehow we can find a way to emerge from this tragedy stronger than before and show that we won't let the deranged acts of one individual tear us apart. This yeah. is a satellite image of the venue where the rally was held at Butler Farms showgrounds. All right. I want him to, I'm hoping he does this, move away from the special for the, the Secret Service guys next to the president. I want to talk about how he was able to get there in the first place because that's the failure. Getting the president out, getting the shooter downed, that wasn't a failure. They got all that squared away. The failure was the fact that he got up there in the first place. That's the big question mark we've had, isn't it? Near Butler, Pennsylvania. It's a wide open outdoor field with ground level and rooftop visibility that extends over 100 meters in every direction. This is a great image uh, for perspective on how close he actually was, this guy. The gunman was able to somehow evade security yeah. and managed to get onto this rooftop here. It's about 420 feet or 130 meters away from the podium and stage where Trump was giving his speech. He was on a one-story building with a pitch that's probably about 25 feet in elevation. Law enforcement reported the shooter used an AR-style rifle recovered at the scene. This suggests that it's most likely a 5.56 round, if that's the case. With a scope, 130 meters is an incredibly easy shot for it someone is. who knows how to shoot. The six to eight bullets appeared to miss President Trump by only a few millimeters after he turned his head slightly to the right. The gunman. That's crazy, that isn't it? Crazy how close it was. Might have aimed for the head because it wouldn't be unheard of for a politician to wear body armor during a speech. Yeah. It looks like the Secret Service counter sniper team were using what looks to be a special version of the bolt action Remington 700 with a suppressor firing a 300 Winchester Magnum round. It's a big with a round. Powerful variable scope. For reference, that's got substantial recoil and pinpoint accuracy out to 800 meters and beyond to the point of what McMillan was saying earlier. This is the type of rifle that you'd be looking for for extended range threats beyond 150 meters. This video posted on X of the counter sniper team has 15 million views with people yeah. disagreeing on whether or not the would be assassin took the first shot or if the counter sniper team fired first. The way I look at the security measures are that they're a tiered and layered approach. I want to let's just quickly go back and look at this, right? We've got two snipers here. Now, if we're going to talk about what he was saying about certain snipers are looking a bit further away, uh, they've got their points of interest, right? They would have been up there before the event and they've been like, here is your point of interest where you're going to be looking, okay? Number two, here's your point of interest where you're going to be looking. These are the, probably the most dangerous areas. Now, it looks like this first sniper, it's almost as if he's like, he, he hasn't got him in the scope at first, and he's kind of like, he looks up and he's like, is that someone there? And then he moves his rifle, he watch. That's 15 million views with people disagreeing on whether or not the would-be assassin took the first shot or if the counter sniper... There, he moves his head up. Now, the only time I would move my head away from a scope... Now, bearing in mind, I've only done marksman drills, not sniper drills, right? Is if I wanted to look at something closer, right? He's looking above there. Now, there could be two things there. He could be trying to look at something closer, or he could be looking to confirm that he's got the kill and he wants to just have a look elsewhere. This guy on the right, though, doesn't at all. And I'm wondering who gets the shot off here between the two of them. The would-be assassin took the first shot, or if the counter sniper team fired first. The way I look at it... Do you know what? I think the guy on the right actually gets the shot. Let me turn him down talk in a second. This guy looks like he, he's trying to move his rifle into a better position. And I'm wondering, because he moves it, we, we look away from the guy on the right. The counter sniper team fired first. The way I look at it kind of this guy jolts a little bit as well. I can't really tell who gets the shot off, to be honest with you. 
for the security measures are that they're a tiered and layered approach. The sniper team is one of the last lines of defense. If they're pulling triggers, that means a lot of other steps have already gone wrong. Yes. Because ideally, a shooter should never even have gotten within a mile of an elevated clear shot of the former president. Exactly. People are um, inevitably going to be picking apart the split-second decisions of the first responders. And I can understand why there's some value in that. But I think the more important question is... How much resources and funding were they given based on the tempo of their operations? And how big was Trump's Secret Service personnel detail? How uh, many resources did they have available to them? How, yeah. how thin were they spread? In Tim McMillan's analysis, he stated, quote, based on limited details at this point, in my opinion, the security breakdown occurred in the middle tier, which would likely include law enforcement who were supposed to be assigned to the area near the outbuildings. So could we turn around and say, oh my God, look how close that is. Can we turn around and say that it was law enforcement that prov that, that failed and let a gunman through? Because that's the big thing, right? Again, I keep circling back to this. The failure is the fact that he got up there. The failure isn't the response. The failure is that he got up there. They wouldn't have to respond if the first part didn't fail. History was at a fork in the road here that was determined by less than an inch in a, a fraction of a second. This building that the gunman took up a firing position on is not a part of the Butler Farm Show perimeter. It lies just outside and belongs to a different company called AGR International. They're a supplier of automation equipment for glass and plastic packaging, but that could be one potential reason as to why this happened, because it was huh. outside the perimeter of the event. But beyond a few trees, yeah. there's nothing between the... I, I like I understand that that's not an excuse though it's a, it's just over a hundred meters away. President, just a wide open field that separates the two. The Secret Service advance team would have created a plan weeks in advance that normally would have identified every single elevated potential sniper position within line of sight. A quick count shows there are about eighteen buildings that have a clear line of sight that I've marked for you on the map. Agents would normally either have someone posted up on each location or they would strictly control access to all these buildings on the ground days in advance. I actually have some idea of how these operations work because over 10 years ago in 2015, President Obama visited a place that I was working at. The Secret Service came to our building weeks in advance for preparation. They did a background check on me and everyone who worked there to make sure none of us were a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> the Secret Service entirely blocked off access to multiple blocks in Midtown New York City. They even parked a row of garbage trucks from the city all around the building to prevent vehicle-borne IEDs from driving into or slamming through the perimeter checkpoints. They spared no expense, did multiple bomb sweeps in advance, and checked to ensure the building was empty the night before. So how the fuck did this guy get on the roof then? If they're being this elaborate, right? That I, Like, it blows my mind that someone was able to get on top of that roof of a rifle. It Honestly, it is so bizarre. Because he's talking about some, like, really hardcore procedures, really hardcore SOPs to prevent anything bad from happening, right? Massive SOPs. And yet, it seems like the Bobby Basics weren't covered in this. Right? It just seems, like, basic, doesn't it? This is called a sterilizing operation where they do these kind of clean sweeps. Agents were thorough and detailed. However, it's possible that the former president was not granted the same size security service for his detail or security funding. My then why? Why was he not then? That makes no sense as well, doesn't it? That should be a red flag as well. My understanding is that former President Trump would have had an increased security detail available to him as soon as he officially became the Republican nominee this week. Information is still coming out, and we still have a lot to learn in the coming days and weeks, but normally those buildings, especially ones that are that close in proximity, would have had access restricted, which is why this eyewitness account is all the more concerning. We noticed a guy crawling, arm, you know, bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us, 50 feet away from us. So we're standing there, you know, we're pointing, we're pointing at the guy crawling up the roof. And he had a gun, right? He had a rifle. A rifle. We could clearly see him with a rifle. Absolutely. There were thousands of people. Oh my event. God. So they literally people who saw it before the secret service. There's some red flags here that 
need addressing and there needs to be a deep analysis of what's gone on and a and a, and a uh, fundamental question about the secret services capabilities here i understand that when it happened everything else was good right we got the lads on the stage we got perimeter squared away the president was covered the former president was covered the sniper got the person cool that's all great that's all great but there's a lot of weird things that happen to get to that point that i'm not i'm not happy with the explanation for it of it's just it happened do you know what i mean we haven't even got an explanation for it yet really though and this early testimony is still being verified the house oversight committee has already called on secret service director kimberly cheadle to testify to congress about what went wrong yes is this a failure of security really at this point we're not going to make that assessment things need to occur investigatively to make those determinations of what, if any, failures there were. The Department of Homeland Security, in their 2024 assessment, identified several rising threats inside America this year, including foreign and domestic terrorism and political extremism. Yeah. The report states over the past year, both domestic violent extremists and homegrown violent extremists inspired by foreign terrorist organizations have engaged in violence in reaction to social political events. Motivated by a mix of conspiracy theories, personalized grievances, and enduring racial, ethnic, religious, and anti-government ideologies often shared online. Mm. At first, I was shocked that this even happened in our country. Yeah. It would be the first time a U.S. president or presidential candidate was injured in an attempted assassination since President Ronald Reagan was shot in 1981. But maybe I shouldn't have been that surprised. According to this New York Times nationwide poll, 10% of those surveyed said that the use of force is justified to prevent Donald Trump from becoming president. A third of those gave that answer also said they owned guns. Wow. That's why the next major question will be, what was the shooter's motive? There are many different potential motivations as we've already seen. There's a rumor that he was wearing a Demolition Ranch t-shirt. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I bet friggin' what's he called over at Demolition Ranch is getting a lot of friggin' questions right now, isn't it? Poor guy. Obviously, he's got no affiliation with this guy. He just wore one of his t-shirts. And it also could have been a false flag. He could have been wearing one of these t-shirts to... Like, we don't know if he supported the Republicans or the Democrats. We don't know this stuff, I'm pretty sure. And who knows if he was wearing it just to be like, look, I look like a Republican or, you know what I mean? We just don't know. And play out around the world in recent assassination attempts. The United States Intelligence Agency recently helped foil a Russian plot to assassinate the CEO of German company Rheinmetall that's providing artillery and vehicles used against Russia. There was also an assassination attempt against the Slovak prime minister for political purposes. The FBI, who's heading up the investigation, released information that the shooter's a 20-year-old white male from Pennsylvania. I'm not going to say his name publicly on this platform <sighs> because I don't want to give air or notoriety to an individual like that. But finding out the motive for law enforcement officials will be an important step to making sure there aren't additional threats. If it does turn out to be politically motivated, it could be a disgruntled Republican or Democrat, which would have an impact on where this goes from here. It's definitely a, it's definitely politically motivated, let's be honest. I definitely should not have been that shocked. After seeing things like this, this New York City theatrical group, Shakespeare in the Park, doing a rendition of President Trump getting stabbed to death in modern day version of Julius Caesar, while he was in office. It wouldn't even be the first politically motivated assassination attempt on Trump. In 2016, someone tried to pull a Secret Service agent's service pistol on Trump, but he was stopped and arrested. This is, I'm just, this is disturbing to me. And I, I kind of needed to get this off my chest. I needed to say something about this so that I feel like it's not just bottled up inside. And I think some other people hopefully can can understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, this is not 100%. a politically motivated video. I, I hope I provided some valuable information or insight. Uh, be sure to follow Tim McMillan on Twitter. He's an expert. He's the the guy to go to on this topic. I sweating. Um, I, yeah. I mean, a sh <sighs> I want to get some of these images up because I think that some of these images are important to look at. I. I want to touch actually on the point that he said at the end there about uh, like the play, the theatrical play where they did the Julius Caesar, but it was Trump instead. And I see you see a lot of talk online. I, like I've seen a lot of Republican people saying, 
the Democrats have been asking for this. They've been asking for this. They've been showing it. And I, I, I want to point out that both sides have been doing this. Both sides have been spouting rhetoric that can be pointed towards um, potential harm on the other side, right? We can't... I can't turn around and say that and be like, that justifies it because it doesn't, right? Both sides are doing things that are kind of un-American at this point, like showing like theatrical stuff of Trump being stabbed. Um, you see, you see, like I've seen pictures of like images of, of trucks with like pictures of Biden being tied up and like jokes where people are like pretending to shoot at pictures of him at, at, at um, like uh, shooting ranges and stuff. Like it just seems like let's take away the let's take the left and right away from this and just show that what we're doing right now in America is we are we are normalizing violence towards political candidates and that's just not okay it's not okay because it's just going to make things worse people could be like if if biden died or if trump died then we wouldn't be in this position that's not the case someone else always steps up and fills their boots sometimes the worse right we're just getting to a point like America needs to chill the fuck out because at the moment, America is the dominant country in this on this planet. They're the ones that are able to dictate what's going on around the world and help people who need helping, stopping bad people from doing bad things around this country, around this planet, right? And if we can't get a grip of what's going on in in the in the actual country of America, they're not going to be able to help other people, right? Europe relies on America to prevent Russia from invading further, right? There's a lot of countries that look to America for inspiration, for reliability, for hope, right? And at the moment, America is setting a bad example by doing this shit. It is horrific that we've got to this point. Horrific. Politics is just... Politics is is should literally just be an opinion on the way people should live. It should not justify trying to assassinate someone in America. It's god awful and it's heartbreaking to see. I woke up. I'm recording this Monday morning. I woke up because obviously I'm living in the UK now. So the events of Saturday night, I got the information Sunday morning, and I woke up and I'm looking at my phone. In fact, the first image I saw, I'll show you the first image I saw. It was um, on Instagram. I'll show you. Woke up, went for me morning poo, as you do, you know. And I woke up and I'm going through Instagram and I see this on Grand Thumbs, on Grand Thumbs Instagram. And I'm like, what is going on here? Like, that was my first reaction. I'm like, what is going on? So I went straight to uh, Reddit to look at news there. Because usually Reddit's pretty... Reddit or Twitter, or X, whatever you want to call it, are usually pretty quick with news, right? They're almost quicker than regular news stations, aren't they? So I went over there and I was like, there is no fucking way that the, the former president was nearly assassinated. And, like, I felt like shit. Like, I felt horrible. You know, we get trained in the Royal Marines to have cheerfulness in the face of adversity. And sometimes when bad things happen, my visceral reaction is to laugh out of disbelief. Right? To laugh and be like, there's no way this has happened. This is ridiculous. Because that's like the way I've been kind of like ingrained to react to certain things like this. But it's almost as if I couldn't with this. It's almost as if I was in so much shock that I was just like, I didn't know how to react. I'm like, no way. Like, he was that close to dying? I mean, look at these images. Look at these images and how close, you know, this isn't the best image to show how close it actually was. This image is. Look at that. Like, it, like I just feel like it's almost too, 
too crazy. And I'm not going to get into conspiracy theories because I'm not into that type of thing. It just feels so bizarre. It's like watching a TV show, isn't it? It's like watching, you know, I don't know what political TV show that's similar to it, but it's almost as if the events are so crazy. Watching the debate where Biden can barely speak, right? Watching Trump with his rhetoric that isn't isn't good either. And it's like, I'm watching it. I'm like, is this the best we can do? Like, really, is this the best we can do as a nation? We should be thriving to improve ourselves. And yet it's almost as if we can't let go of ego. You know? I was never in a position to vote in America. I just got my citizenship. I think it was just after the 2020 election. And so I was never able to vote in America. Um, But I also remember sitting there and thinking, I don't know who I'd even vote for. I don't think any of them align with my ethos as an individual. And what's sad about it is I couldn't even tell that to people. Because as soon as you say, I don't know who I'd vote to, the left people will be like, oh my God, he's right. The right people will be like, oh my God, he's a lefty. Like, it's almost as if you're not even allowed to have individualism anymore. Do you know what I mean? It, it, and I'm not, I don't want to rant. Like, I'm ranting about politics and I never thought I'd even get to that point on the channel. Because I'm not, I'm not like a massively political person. I'm really not. I understand that I'm in a very, I'm, I'm in such a privileged place, right? Where I don't have to worry about political agendas because I am in such a, a majority. I am a straight white person that is able to live in America, able to live in the UK. I can own a gun if I want. I can. I have the financial freedom to be able to buy a ranch in the middle of the Colorado mountains and stay away from everything. I'm in such a privileged place. Like I'm not a, a person of minority, right? I'm not someone who is directly going to be affected. I'm not a, a young girl that is worried about abortion, right? I'm not in these categories. And so I understand that my viewpoint of being like, I don't know who to vote for is very privileged in a way. But at the same time, I have to I have to have my own individualism. I have to understand who I want to agree with. And I, it's almost as if I just can't, I can't back anyone. But that makes me a bad guy. Do you get what I'm saying? People might agree with me in there. People might hate on me for saying that. And that's exactly, that's my point proven about saying if you can't pick a team, you're the enemy, Right? You could go and look through the comments of this video. I guarantee someone's like, oh my God, he's just right wing. Oh my God, he's just left wing. Guarantee that's happening in the comments right now because I'm not, because I'm not like aligning with a with either Trump or Biden. Do you know what I mean? Like, and that proves my point to a T. In fact, I bet people commented shit like that before we even got to this point of the video. And so it just, it, it makes me, it makes me it, crazy angry. Do you know, I remember, um, I remember when it all kicked off in um, America with the 2020 election, the 2016 election, and talking to my best friend. And me and my best friend have um, different political views in certain aspects, certain, I don't know, like certain opinions on certain things. We just vary a little bit, right? And we were sat down and able to just like talk our thoughts out and agree to disagree on some things and agree to agree on some things. And it's almost as if that, like, that's b become not normal anymore. It's become normal to just hate. It's not become normal to talk to someone. Like, how many videos do you see online of liberals destroy conservatives? Conservative destroys liberal. And you go and it's like interviews where they're trying to catch each other out on political rallies. Or There's no one going to these interviews and trying to connect and trying to be like, why are you here? What do you follow? This is what I follow. Do we agree or disagree on this thing? And are we okay to come to a certain kind of like middle ground here? You don't see that anymore because it doesn't get views on YouTube. Social media has pushed this agenda where if it's not an extreme voice, a big gotcha on, on a video. Oh, I managed to make somebody, you know, contradict themselves on their political view. 
that's what gets attention and it just drives more team-based political views without individualism and it's it's just it's heartbreaking to see in it china and russia are sat there laughing their ass off at this china's looking at this with a massive grin on their face putin's looking at this with a massive grin on his face and yet we're all pointing fingers at in each other take what you want from this video i'd love to know your thoughts in the comments I want a mature discussion in the... I'm talking to YouTube and I'm asking for a, a mature discussion in the comments. It's not probably, probably not going to happen. I do know that the people who watch my videos, the community that I've formed, are a generally um, mature um, audience. And we have... I've seen some of the comments you guys make. I know you're capable of, of um, talking in a mature manner without pointing fingers. And I feel like... Um, I'll try and pin some of them to the top. All right. Let me know what you think. It's it's a very sad day, no matter what side you're on in America. It's a very, very sad day, uh, a very dangerous day for the country. And because it's a dangerous day for America, it's a dangerous day for the rest of the world. Until next time, I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.